The story revolves around Lily, who, after a 37-year career, faces unjust treatment at her workplace, leading to her resignation. Subsequently, her former company experiences turmoil when 49 clients cancel their transactions, prompting the president to seek her return. This narrative explores themes of workplace harassment, resilience, and redemption, as Lily navigates the challenges posed by colleagues and the dramatic turn of events following her departure. At present, I am responsible for managing a total of 45 clients, a demanding task that keeps me constantly occupied, although I do have a part-time employee assisting me with the accounting entries. Despite the overwhelming workload, I must never display any signs of weakness. Our clients have been with us for a long time, and many of them have faced their fair share of challenges and hardships. Witnessing their resilience in the face of adversity, I am determined not to let them down. Here I am once again sitting in front of my computer, feeling troubled by the recent behavior of my colleagues Tom and Emily. Tom, who is seven years younger than me, recently got promoted to head of the tax department and his attitude towards me has changed drastically. He used to be a friendly colleague, but now he speaks to me in a condescending manner and constantly criticizes my work. Despite my efforts to defend myself, Tom remains unfazed and continues to belittle me. Emily, Tom's assistant, also joins in on the criticism, mocking me for not working efficiently enough. I was actually offered the promotion to department head before Tom, but declined because I value client interaction over management responsibilities. However, Tom and Emily are unaware of this fact. I will continue to do my best in my current role and prove them wrong. With a heavy sigh, I reluctantly opened the client files left on my desk, only to discover that some of them were actually Emily's responsibility. It was evident that Tom's constant harassment was driven by his desire for me to retire quickly. My extensive experience and deep knowledge in taxation surpassed his own, causing other members of the tax department to seek my guidance instead of his. Additionally, there were other reasons why everyone avoided Tom, his unapproachable demeanor and unkempt appearance made him unappealing to interact with. Suddenly, Tom instructed me to take care of several client files and swiftly left the office without waiting for my response. Panic washed over me as I realized that all these files had deadlines within the same month. I called out to Tom in confusion, but he was already far away, busy packing up his belongings. I was left to deal with the overwhelming workload on my own. Emily, finding the situation amusing, followed Tom out of the office, laughing mockingly. Those were the only words I could manage to utter. However, the relentless harassment from Tom and Emily persisted. They constantly criticized my increasing overtime, deeming it a complete waste. Today, Tom's anger reverberated through the office once again as he scolded me, demanding that I stop working overtime. According to Emily, the reason for my overtime the previous day was simple, Tom had dumped a month's worth of declaration forms on my desk, expecting me to file them by the end of the month after work. However, one day, an unexpected turn of events occurs when the narrator is summoned to the president's office. The company had recently experienced a change in leadership as the president's father, who had been managing the company since its inception, had fallen ill and passed on the reins to his son. The son, who had previously worked at another company, was still unfamiliar with the inner workings of their own company. Nevertheless, circumstances forced him to take over the presidency. I approached the president's office with a mixture of curiosity and unease, and as I stepped inside, I couldn't help but notice the presence of Tom and Emily, both wearing unsettling smirks on their faces. Confused and apprehensive, I muttered under my breath, ensuring that my words would only reach my own ears in the tense and peculiar atmosphere. I couldn't help but wonder why Tom and the others were there. As my mind whirled with confusion, I recalled the conversations I had overheard from Tom and Emily. They had accused me of overbilling for overtime, insinuating that while other members of the tax department had a mere 15 hours of overtime per month, I had exceeded 80 hours. It struck me as odd that Tom and Emily, on the other hand, had no overtime recorded for this month. Their impeccable record seemed almost too good to be true. I vehemently denied any intentional overbilling for overtime, emphasizing that my prolonged working hours were merely a consequence of being unable to complete my workload within regular hours. Despite my explanation, the president let out a deep sigh, expressing their doubts about my claims. 
however, lacking substantial evidence, they decided not to pursue the matter further. To my surprise and bewilderment, the president revealed that they required my resignation by the end of the month. Stunned, I couldn't help but question the reasoning behind such a demand. What did the president mean by this? I asked, struggling to comprehend the situation. Facing the president's stern gaze, I desperately tried to explain the discrepancy in my overtime hours. I confess that my excessive overtime was a result of taking on additional tasks assigned by Tom and Emily. However, I refrained from implicating Tom directly, fearing that it would reflect poorly on my own time management skills. Instead, I opted to present the facts as they were. Nevertheless, the president expressed their concerns about employing someone who worked at such a slow pace. Consequently, they requested my resignation, asserting that my efficiency fell below the standards they expected from their employees. Before I could process my thoughts further, the president addressed me, using my name with a tone that hinted at a serious matter to discuss. Startled, I inquired about the purpose of this unexpected meeting. My mind raced with various possibilities and concerns. The president appeared resolute in his decision to ask me to leave the company, leaving me feeling disheartened. I had dedicated my entire 37-year career to this organization, and yet I found myself constantly overlooked and underappreciated for the extra effort I put in. Not only did I have to carry out my own duties, but I also had to shoulder the workload of Tom and Emily. Despite my exhaustion, I understood the situation and ultimately decided to resign. It dawned on me that I had already expressed this intention to the president, and as I glanced at Tom and Emily, I noticed the smug expressions on their faces, as if they were reveling in my departure. Emily even had the audacity to thank me for quitting, her sneer leaving a bitter taste in my mouth. I met her gaze with a silent stare, refusing to let her belittle me any further. Tom, too, looked down on me in a similar manner, relishing in the cost-cutting measures that led to my departure. Undeterred by their contempt, I focused on the task at hand, meticulously creating handover documents for all my clients and bidding farewell to those I was passing on my responsibilities to. Despite my efforts, I was unable to secure a meeting with the president to say, goodbye, in person, so I resorted to sending letters and informing them of my chosen successor. At first, I chose not to answer the phone, hoping that my silence would send the message that I had moved on. However, the company persisted and continued calling me multiple times. To my surprise, I also received calls from Tom and Emily, both using their personal mobile phones. Perhaps they thought I would be more inclined to answer their calls. Reluctantly, I decided to pick up the phone and greet them with a simple, Hello, Lily. Little did I know that the situation on their end was far from calm. The president's voice came through the line, urgently asking, who exactly are you? I couldn't help but laugh mockingly at his question. After all, who was I besides an unemployed woman? A week had passed since I handed in my resignation, and I finally had a chance to relax at home. Leading up to my resignation, I had been tirelessly engaged in the handover process and had been swamped with various tasks even before that. Needless to say, I was in desperate need of some downtime. Just as I was relishing in the thought of unwinding, my mobile phone suddenly started ringing. I hesitantly picked up the call, only to discover that it was from my previous company. I couldn't help but wonder what they could possibly want from me now that I had already taken care of all the necessary procedures for my departure, including social insurance matters. I had already resigned from the company, so what more could they possibly want from me? However, before I could voice my thoughts, the president spoke with a sense of panic in his voice. Since my departure, the company had received a staggering 49 calls requesting to halt any transactions with them. The president pleaded for me to return to the company immediately. Without giving me a chance to respond, he abruptly ended the call. It was clear that they were in dire straits and desperately needed my help. Reluctantly, I got up from my cozy spot and made my way back to the company. As soon as I arrived, I was greeted by the pale. Faces of both Tom and Emily, further emphasizing the gravity of the situation. Both of them had noticeable dark circles under their eyes, which caught me off guard and made me wonder what could possibly be wrong with them. I couldn't help but ask, my surprise evident in my tone. 
Tom, in response, shot me a glare and proceeded to reveal the reason behind their exhausted appearances. It turned out that they had been inundated with countless calls to halt transactions, not just from our clients, but also from potential companies we were planning to collaborate with. Tom's accusing gaze intensified as he confronted me, demanding an explanation for my actions. Emily, too, regarded me with suspicion, expressing her disappointment at the unexpected underhandedness she believed I was responsible for. The weariness that etched their faces was undoubtedly a result of dealing with the relentless stream of cancellations, and perhaps even the sheer weight of the situation. Of course, I knew deep down that I hadn't done anything to intentionally harm our clients, but I couldn't help but speculate on the reasons behind their sudden change of heart. It was possible that the cancellations were unavoidable this time. I muttered this to myself, only to be met with an outburst from Tom, accusing me once again of being at fault and demanding that I accompany him to the president's office. Without hesitation, Tom forcefully led me through the office doors, with Emily hastily trailing behind. As we entered, the president looked up from his desk and locked eyes with me. Before I could say a word, Tom wasted no time in accusing me in front of the president, painting me as the mastermind behind the cessation of transactions. He went as far as suggesting that not only should I be forced to resign, but also face legal consequences for the damages caused. Emily, though carefully choosing her words in the presence of the president, passionately argued in favor of Tom's claims. At that moment, the president shared that he had received a call from his father, the former president, regarding clients who had approached him directly to negotiate about Lily. This revelation surprised me as I had not anticipated the clients taking such drastic action. Emily chimed in, expressing doubt that Lily was the reason for the client's departure. The president then addressed the situation seriously, highlighting the differences between my personalized approach and Tom and Emily's manual operations. He acknowledged that while my method may be time-consuming and inefficient, it ultimately benefited our clients more. However, Tom and Emily were not convinced and expressed concerns about the feasibility of providing detailed attention to each case. The president disregarded their concerns and turned to me, questioning why numerous companies had ceased their transactions. After Lily had departed, I took a moment to compose myself before responding with clarity. I explained that our clients no longer required our tax management services as they could find cheaper alternatives with other accounting firms. However, they had chosen to stay with us because of the personalized tax-saving strategies that I provided. Tom interjected, criticizing my attitude towards the president and questioning my worth. In summary, my father's words highlighted Lily's invaluable contributions to the tax department. The president's initial apology and subsequent offer to revoke Lily's resignation demonstrated the company's recognition of her importance. However, Tom and Emily's objections and the president's revelation about their negligence painted a different picture. The situation had taken an unexpected turn, leaving us all to ponder the complex dynamics within the company. My father mentioned to me that the tax department owed its success to Lily. Not only did she effectively manage her clients, but she also provided support and assistance to her colleagues and clients alike. Dad even went as far as to say that Lily possessed a level of knowledge and expertise that Tom simply could not match. In fact, had Lily not declined certain opportunities, she could have easily surpassed the position of department head by now. As the president addressed us, a sense of pain and disappointment emanated from his expression. Emily, clearly taken aback, appeared to struggle with the idea that I could have potentially become her superior. The president's voice carried on, expressing his regret for having previously accepted Lily's resignation and inquiring if there was a possibility of revoking it. It was evident that Lily's presence was highly valued within the company. My father had even emphasized the significance of her role. Naturally, I felt a sense of happiness and relief upon hearing the president's change of heart. However, despite my genuine appreciation, I found it difficult to accept the offer. Tom was an exceptional boss, one who genuinely cared for his subordinates. It seemed unjust to choose Lily over him, and Emily made sure to voice her disapproval as well. The president's response to their objections was stern and direct. He revealed that since Lily's resignation, the tax department had been inundated with complaints. It appeared that Tom and Emily had been shirking there. 
responsibilities and burdening others with their workload. This revelation left Tom visibly pale, his face drained of color. The president's tone shifted to one of disgust as he addressed them. Before I could respond, Tom interjected into our conversation, questioning the president's decision. He expressed his belief that Lily was more deserving of the position than himself and refused to accept this change. It was clear that Tom was visibly upset, and Emily joined in his protest. It has come to my attention that you have been delegating your responsibilities to your subordinates, particularly Emily, when it comes to preparing your client's declaration forms. There have been rumors circulating about you pushing your work onto Lily until she ultimately resigned, with some even accusing you of calling her a salary thief. However, it appears that the roles may have been reversed. Additionally, there have been whispers of a romantic relationship between you and Emily, despite your marital status. When confronted with evidence of inflated expense claims and inappropriate dining expenses, you both were unable to provide a satisfactory explanation. As a result, I must terminate your employment effective immediately. Concerned about her reputation, Emily was desperate to salvage the situation. I offered some advice to Tom and Emily, urging them to stop resisting and accept the repercussions with dignity. However, Tom was defiant and lashed out at me, blaming me for his predicament. I reminded him that actions have consequences and encouraged him to take responsibility for his actions. As the tension escalated, I hinted that there may be more information about Tom and Emily's misconduct that had not yet been revealed. Despite their pleas for me to keep quiet, I warned them that dishonesty and deceit would eventually be exposed. The president intervened, urging Tom and Emily to face the consequences of their actions and learn from their mistakes before it was too late. Tom and Emily were struggling to resist the consequences of their actions. They pleaded for a second chance, promising to rectify their mistakes and make amends to their colleagues. Emily's eyes welled up with tears as she realized the gravity of potentially losing her job due to neglecting her duties and engaging in an inappropriate relationship with a supervisor. It would be in your best interest to confront the reality of the situation. Before things escalated further, both Tom and Emily found themselves on their knees, their actions leading to their immediate termination. I then proceeded to expose their wrongdoings, which included Tom deceiving his superiors by pretending to go on business trips, when in reality, he was spending days with Emily. Additionally, they were both guilty of harassing employees, creating a hostile work environment that ultimately forced some to quit. I did my best to support these employees, but Tom and Emily were masters at their manipulative tactics. They would consistently reprimand and pressure employees when I wasn't around, often springing demanding tasks with tight deadlines out of nowhere. Those who resigned asked me to keep their reasons quiet, but now they have found contentment in new positions at different companies. Thus, I felt it was necessary to speak out. The president was livid upon learning the truth, expressing his anger by slashing Tom and Emily's final salaries. Furthermore, he vowed to conduct a thorough investigation into their past claims of inflated expenses. Tom, desperate to salvage his situation, pleaded with the president, tears streaming down his face. He begged him not to cut his salary, fearing the repercussions it would have on his family if they were to find out. Eventually, Tom's affair with Emily was exposed to his wife, leading to their divorce. Now, both individuals find themselves facing legal claims for compensation in the ongoing divorce lawsuit. Strangely enough, Tom reached out to me, asking for my assistance in persuading the president to reconsider their termination. Both he and Emily are trapped in a dire predicament. Currently, Tom and Emily are facing difficulties in securing new employment as the tax industry is a tight-knit community where news of wrongdoings spreads rapidly, making it challenging for them to find job opportunities. Despite their desperate need for money to cover expenses related to their divorce and livelihood, they have resorted to working as day laborers at construction sites, a stark contrast to their previous office jobs. Emily often reaches out to me in tears, lamenting her situation and expressing her desire for a better life. However, I remind her that their current predicament is a result of their own actions, and that they must face the consequences of their choices. While Emily struggles with the hardships they are facing, I am content with my decision to stay away from work, despite offers to return. The president may be eager for my return, but I have chosen to stay away from a work environment that once asked me to resign. 
Sometimes, it is necessary to accept the consequences of one's actions and make peace with the choices made. Currently, I am assisting a close acquaintance at their tax office in order to supplement my income. However, once the current circumstances stabilize, I have aspirations to establish my own office, just like my friend has done, but with my own unique touch. In doing so, I will have complete autonomy over my working style, ensuring that it aligns perfectly with my clients' needs and preferences. As a tax accountant, my ultimate goal is to establish a harmonious relationship with my clients, where we are equals in the realm of professional services, rather than adopting a hierarchical dynamic akin to that of a teacher and student. This new phase of my professional journey has just begun, and I am eagerly anticipating the opportunity to delve further into the realms of my passions and aspirations.